Hey guys, this is my third devlog on my current indie game project, which is going to be a 2D metroidvania based on mountain climbing and exploration. So again, two weeks have passed since I did my last update and I've made quite a bit of progress, so I want to show you. So the past weeks have been mostly about adding new game content for a completely new area in the game as well as adding a few new gameplay mechanics and improving the existing ones. So at this point uh, I feel like I have enough game content that I will start, uh, I will spend the next weeks to polish what I already have instead of adding new stuff uh, in order to actually be able to release a first public demo to you. So without further ado, let's get to work. I've completed most of the ice caves, which is the third area besides the town that I've created now. As a visual point of view, I tried to go for this beautiful, sparkling kind of look that you would expect from a large frozen cavern. And the whole area is kind of like semi-transparent, shine through, and it's also slippery, which I've used as a gameplay mechanic quite a few times. In the caves, I wanted to have water, so I added a new swimming mechanic and these additional character mechanics always end up being much more work than I planned initially. But if you add a new character mechanic, you just have to do it absolutely right. Otherwise, it will end up being frustrating to the player and you lose more rather than gain something from it. I added a few water enemies, like for instance this plant, which is shooting, chasing projectiles, which the player has to dodge, but can also utilize to break barricades. A lot of work was the new boss battle system that I implemented, so I wanted to have a few boss battles, it's not the main focus, like combat is not the main focus of my gameplay, but I still wanted to have um, some boss battles as kind of apex elements in the game. I may tend to over-engineer these systems sometimes, but here it definitely seemed to pay off to invest some time and make it very generic. You are able now to create a variable number of boss cycles, uh, which contain different movement, different attack behavior, and really customize a lot of these things without having to hard code any simple behavior. As still with the enemy behaviors, these are among the more buggy things for now, so I may have to invest some more time in the future on these. The grappling hook was one of my earliest ideas for the game and the mechanic that I implemented first probably. So since you find it in the ice cave, I now had to actually design the levels for it and I found out that it still needs some tweaking. So before I used pretty much only a spring joint, this ended up being a little more chaotic. So there was no real angular momentum, so you couldn't really swing. You were rather bouncing around around your uh, hook point, which is not directly what I wanted. So I tried a different approach using a distance joint instead of a spring joint. So the distance joint is completely stiff. There is no spring at all. So you had a perfect angular swing but it ended up being too rigid. So I ended up using a combination of both, a distance joint for the connection to the hook and another spring joint that connects um, the rope to the player for an additional buffer. So I guess this is kind of like a real life climbing rope works. Ropeways were my idea for implementing fast travel in the game. Which is quite important in Metroidvania since you don't want the player to go through the exact same paths like a hundred times. So I also love it when the systems integrate seamlessly with the game setting and story. So I thought that ropeways kind of work with the mountain setting. The narrative is that the ropeways were built in the golden age by the sapphire people. These were like the great builders. But now they are abandoned. And later in the game you have the chance to repair the engine and restart the ropeways, which enable you to do the fast travel. So I already had a zipline mechanic before, which allows the player to quickly descend from the mountain. And I thought I might actually combine those two, that you can use the ropes of the ropeway system to descend early on already, but not until you unlock the ropeway to repair it, um, you can actually also ascend and use the cars.
Besides the different gemstones, another collectible in the game are herbs, which also kind of fit in with the mountain setting. So these herbs you can bring to the local alchemist in order to brew potions. And when equipped, these potions give you different perks, but you can only equip one potion at a time. So I made a basic UI for doing this alchemy, brewing potions, and I made another UI window for the character menu. Here you can equip potions, but you can also take a look at your inventory, your backpack. This contains all of the items that you collected. These include herbs, but also quest items and all of the other things, which I don't even know yet. Alright, so this was a short summary of the work that has been done over the past two weeks. I hope to be back in another two weeks or so with my next update. And as I said, I would really like to get out a public demo as soon as possible. I will now focus definitely on polishing the stuff that I already have and getting out something playable. So until next time, have fun creating and see you. Mm -hmm.